All right, let's take a look at the 2018 Pelican Trailblazer 100 NXT. Uh, this boat is 10 feet long, 29 inches wide. It's 36 pounds of their Ramex plastic, which they claim to be uh, the good stuff. It's got that twin hull uh, design, which you know offers stability yet uh, not necessarily control. Um, you're not going to make good time in a straight line uh, across a lake in this boat. But if you're just looking for something kind of like a beater boat for local kind of small waterways and out at the little lake, <clears throat> you know, just kind of drifting around or on, you know, some smaller creeks and rivers, class one, right? You'd probably say you could handle class two water in this boat. Um, you know, if you go into it understanding that, um, you know, that's what this boat was built to handle, I, I think you'll have a hard time finding much to complain about. Um, it's got the two-piece build, which some people are critical of. You've got one piece of plastic up on the deck and a sec second piece of plastic makes up the, the lower half of the hull of the boat and they're just kind of you know, seamed together somehow down the middle. Um, you know some you know, critics I guess would say that uh, if you took, a, took the wrong hit that you run the risk of splitting that seam. I, I kind of, I don't know, it feels pretty good to me. If, again, if you're not putting it in, in water it's not supposed to be in, I don't think you're going to have a problem with it. You'd have to take a pretty hard hit to, to break the boat. So, you know, that may be a con of some, may not matter to others. To me, it doesn't really matter. Same kind of goes with the design of the, of the floor of the boat, the hull of the boat. It's got it's the twin hull design. It's, uh, you know, it's stable. And for me, that was um, kind of a requirement. I want to be stable as I'm going to be loaded heavily with gear and that sort of thing. Um, so I was willing to trade, uh, you know, kind of control um, that a different shaped hole might give me for the stability of this flat shaped hole. And I don't plan on doing a lot of flat water paddling in it. So. There's no need for me to have a a boat that was any any faster anyway. So what I ended up with is a, a, a gear hauler that I think is going to be able to to handle some some decent uh, some decent rivers. I'll probably get this up into some class two water and not not feel nervous about it whatsoever. Now what I might feel nervous about is how much water it takes on, but we'll get to that. Um, it, there's very few cons in my mind that are just out outright cons. Um, you know, you've got the you've got the debates about the the two piece uh, build. You've got your debates about the whole shape, but to me those are just fine. There's a couple things, however, that really stand out. It's just just kind of either poor, just bad bad design or just laziness or I don't know so for starters I can't believe Pelican would even put this in their boats like I, I almost feel uh, ashamed for them but if you look next to the seats here you see how they've stuck this styrofoam box in there well I don't take styrofoam on a river and I don't like it when others take styrofoam on rivers either, to be honest. And on top of this being styrofoam, it's just the cheapest, softest, uh, crumbliest styrofoam that they could get their hands on, apparently. It's really just cheap. And I think that there, there probably is just like some kind of regulation somewhere that says like it's got to have something in it to, to sell it. And so they just slap that crap in there. 
but it's trash and probably can all be ashamed of themselves for this. They uh, could easily, and for not much more money probably, move up to some sort of phone block that's more substantial and won't, you know, kill our fish. So that's a big downer. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them. I'm going to probably remove them honestly before I go on like a, a wild river. Um, I've kind of had this in some local like public uh, lakes and that sort of thing and you notice it flaking away. I feel bad about it even there but not as bad as I would if I had gone out to a scenic river or something like that. So I'm going to figure out a fix for this. My immediate thought is uh, the rooftop blocks. Uh, maybe I can get some of that foam and cut it down and stick it in there and still have the uh, uh, you know the support it might give the the boat but yet you know be something a little more substantial than that another kind of con to me and I don't know this I'm gonna, let me go back on this back and forth on this also <coughs> Because your footrests are not like an adjustable footrest. They are, uh, it's like one piece of molded plastic, and then it's got just little positions every six or eight inches or something like that. So it's kind of like a one size fits all deal. No, no adjustment. I was a little bit bummed out when I noticed it, and then I was kind of like, I can't believe I, I, I was actually kind of surprised I didn't notice it. But a few times I've been out in this boat, I'm kind of coming around to them. And, um, and, the, that's, and there's a couple upsides. So one, they're, they're, they're fail safe. There's no failure uh, here. Two, I found myself easily moving kind of from like a relaxed um, position into an aggressive position. And that felt kind of good. And so, you know, you end up with something it's lightweight and serves its purpose and it's it's not it's not it's not metal and adjustable but I'm gonna be okay with it I'm coming around to it that being said if you look right next to it we got a 55 liter drawback that can fit into the bow of this boat so, I'm not kidding about the storage space. It's massive. I mean, nothing can go on within there. Now, I'm I'm five foot seven, and I find my, my find my feet on this uh, second step there most often, uh, the second foot rest. Um, if I relax, I can relax down onto the third uh, step. But there's plenty of space for that bag. Um, I had it in there full of air, tight with air to see you know how well it actually fit. And it didn't feel crowded to me at all. If if you were you know, a six footer, uh, your foot might be kind of rubbing up against it a little bit. But how annoying that would be to you, I'm not sure. But that's a heck of a lot of uh, uh, stowing uh, stowage space, I suppose, right there. Carry, okay. yeah, that's a week's worth of gear. For me, right there in that one, in that one bag, if I if I loaded it up as if I was going out on a week week long trip, I could fit into that bag and I could fit into that bow. If I wanted to go on a two week trip, or if I wanted to go on a one week trip that was a little more comfortable, then I can fill up the deck, and I can fill up even below the deck because I cut a hole in it too. So, you get a lot out of this boat. Now, I'm not going to get into these just yet, although y'all niggas are going to have stuff like, oh my god, what's going on? It's nothing like what I came home from the store with. But before we get into that, the third con. You got this badass storage area, right? I've got a 100, li uh, 100 liter backpack style dry bag that I can fill up pretty well full and get in here. So that's badass. You can carry so much gear. You could have you could have a, you could go glamping in this thing, you know. 
However, you've lost your debt. You know, you, you, and what's going on is all the square footage now has been dedicated as a gutter. And so any splashing you take on, any paddle drip, things like that, just get funneled straight down into this little tiny hole that they drilled behind the seat. And that, of course, just carries under the seat and back to the stern. So you're going to end up with water underneath you. And I was, you know, I just didn't think about it as I was looking at it. I was, I, I guess I got hypnotized just by the, the storage space right there, if I, if I, you know, would be honest. But now that I'm looking at it, I think, why the heck didn't they just carry, let's see if I can show you, like, you know, kind of carry this over and just have, had that been just solid, so that you had a sunken spot that could only hold so much water. But now you got a sunken spot that is, you know, could sink your boat, honestly. If you got sucked under a ledge and had water pouring into that, you could, that could be the end of you for a minute, you know? You're gonna be digging this thing out. So, that's, what, that's kind of one of those things. It's just like, heck on, oh well. So we try to keep dry. But, now we're down here. I guess we'll just start at the tail. I'll show you uh, some of the stuff I did to fix this thing up. And we'll just start at the very, very back here. If you look in here, you see, I removed the, the little string and plastic handle that it came with. And I used that spot instead to anchor off my drain plug. So I knotted inside there. And I allowed it to pull tight. This drain plug is just a piece of rubber. It comes from the factory, just kind of drilled, you know, but with solid on the end. So I, just with a pair of shears, like snip that tip off and then uh, push the paracord right through it. And uh, nice and secure for my drain plug. I went ahead and added real, uh, real handles, of course. So I put these on uh, both ends, front and back, the rubberized grips. Um, the uh, grips, I believe, are about $12 for a pair at Academy Sports. Uh, I sunk this one in with rivets um, because I put those in before cutting the hole that I'm about to show you. So I didn't have any other way to access it. Uh, so I put that one in with rivets. We'll see how those work. I need to I'll double back up with screws and and washers now that I have access to it through the uh, hatch I put in. But especially on the front end, this is a huge, um, uh, a huge improvement to these types of boats because you know now you can, you know now you can actually just you know handle them. You can yank them around through, drag them, drag them through rapids if you need to. You can, uh, you know, hold your um, Use it to you know, tie on your bumper and that sort of thing. So that goes a long way. All right, moving up. I removed the original bundies and saved those for later. I added two J hooks. So one and two on the other end because the original bungee was just, you know, cross threaded around uh, the front four bungees there and then, you know, had a little bar behind it and, and sunk through so that they were. Uh, anchored in to those bags so I went ahead and dropped two J hooks in there that was easy enough now you're looking at the rigging thinking what in the world so that's a uh, three dollar motorcycle cargo net from Harbor Freight that I just stretched across the four existing uh, and two brand new J hooks and bam a nice little uh, rigging uh, system, you know, nice, nice net to really secure down your your pack back there. So, of course, getting into this, Let me just come off the hook. This was a six-inch hatch that I dropped in there. Um, I got this. I got the hatch for about twelve dollars, also at Academy Sports, and it was in the fishing department. 
not in the kayaking accessories. The one in that department costs $40 and comes with a bag that you end up throwing away after your first season um, that they call a dry bag. So here I've dropped a simple little uh, six inch hash cover in. You'll notice that the kayak itself, the deck itself I should say, is kind of textured. It's got this, uh, it's not perfectly smooth. So what I did was I got from Harbor Freight um, at the same time I bought this uh, net, a pack of their shop mats, the fatigue floor mats, and then I cut a disc, you know, cut a donut out to match the kit here, and silicone underneath the foam, silicone on top of the foam, and then the main frame end screwed down, and uh, works like a charm. So it's opened up this whole rear end here. And you gain access to a lot of space. However, we must remember it will be wet back there, so anything that goes in there will need to be waterproofed. But it's a great spot for just kind of those random items that don't pack well. Or if you even wanted to carry a, you know, uh, uh, you know, a bag of hot dog buns, you could feel safe that they're probably going to be okay down there because you know there's nothing to squat, uh, squish them or whatnot. So. You know, if you put put stuff in a dry bag and drop her in, or some of those little, you know, dry uh, boxes, uh, you can drop that in there, and you, you've opened up a lot of space that way. So that's pretty cool. And I'm really excited about that. And again, just avoid the the kayak branded accessories and go to the fishing department instead. There you go, three dollars for the net. I stretch it on across. I got some. Uh, Night Eyes S hooks, that's the number one. I just like having them around, so that's a place I can keep them for now. Um, I can use the hooks to increase tension or decrease tension and that sort of thing. Um, you also see that they're holding tension on my static line. I just like having a, uh, a static line to lash with or you know tie off to or latch on to or whatnot. And we'll follow this static line on up, but you'll see that it's just aiding, aiding in the tensioning of the uh, cargo net here. And uh, can be adjusted depending on what you're trying to pack underneath here. So you can, when, you've got, when you're starting to stretch this thing out pretty good, you can release tension by just popping off one of those guys. And it'll give it some space. You can move it around on the line a little bit. Uh, and then it gives you, gives you some options. Uh, you can also just you know, undo the center one and you can get you know fatter packs under it that way so it's uh it's pretty cool it's a pretty pretty cool rig i'm stoked on it now you'll see right behind the seat here this is about a four or five dollar fanny pack from walmart they're outdoor brand or whatnot i uh just did some real simple cuts on the belt and was able to use the uh seat uh seat webbing to uh, secure it to the back of the seat so you got a nice little uh, quick access uh, pouch behind you for you know granola bars or something like that um, I did have to add a, a, a few of these these eyes along here to guide the static line and you see how it came up on this one I used that uh, what's this two eye something or other I can't remember exactly what they call that, but it comes from like Bass Pro. It's kind of on, it's kind of shaped like a cleat, so you know I can clip off on it, or I can, um, you know, link up with, uh, you know, paddle partner, and you know, float along together for a minute quite easily, and that sort of thing. On the other side, I dropped in a uh, taco clip for my paddle, and I kind of used my paddle to determine that placement. <clears throat> And uh, it just rests so nice and tight against the boat when it's clipped right there. So before you just go screwing those things in, make sure you've lined your paddle up and you've found the sweet spot for it, you know, because every boat's going to have some different lines to it and uh, it makes a big difference on how your paddle sits. Uh, another modification I did right here, and I used the same foam uh, padding underneath here that I did to set the ring for my hatch in the back. That's more of that fatigue mat. 
So I cut a couple nice pieces and I tried to fit them as best I could to cover the main areas here. And that just gives you a little more cushion because uh, honestly what they send you home with is like a little sheet of neoprene and uh, you feel your bones in that plastic uh, fairly quickly. So that made a big difference. Uh, these are the remnants of the these are the remnants of the cargo net. I uh, scavenged them for their little rubber tips and I used those rubber tips around the boat where I added uh, uh, some of these some of these eyes and tie-off points and stuff. Another cool thing about this boat is this little cargo net. So you can throw stuff in here. It's pretty it's pretty big and deep, honestly. You can fit quite a bit in there, right? And then you can actually even tuck it away. And so it seals itself up in there. And it's, uh, I've paddled on, you know, just the little lakes around here and stuff um, with my phone tucked up in there and, and uh, no concern whatsoever. It's a cool little spot. They had originally run their bungees just slightly differently though. So I've got them doubled up on the same J hooks here. But initially this, this front one ran to a J hook that came in the center of the deck up here. So what I did, I had to pull that guy out of the way. Brought it back here and it'll actually hold up a map you know, prop a, prop a map or a phone or something like that. Or you can just use it to tuck your water bottle, whatnot. So anyway, I just doubled up there and I added four eyelets back here in the back, or I'm sorry, up here in the front. One, two, three, and four. And then I just used the same bungee that was uh, strung up in the back deck area. I just brought it up to the front deck and found this position. And then I've got it knotted like this because it allows me to adjust the tension and, and certain ways, right? So you can pull it, you know, pull it, pull it. If you open them all the way up, they're really loose, of course. So you can kind of use this to, you know, as a secondary uh, lash point and you can use it to adjust the tension at the same time. And it lays like that, which actually is kind of like a cool, <laughs> looking design anyway. And then of course I've just got that threaded uh, through the four new eyes and then I made use of the new handle as well which again is super secure. Nice and secure. And then my static line was tucked under here. And you'll see the design here is kind of something in it. Right? So I tied off on a washer pretty pretty neatly. And uh, I kept all my, my cordage off of the nose. So no worries about bumps along the, uh, you know, as you're heading down river and that sort of thing. Less opportunity for snagging um, without it, you know, wrapping around the actual no the, the nose of the boat like that. And it's just nice and clean. So I've got, I believe everything covers. Like I said, $150 boat, $50 in mods, and uh, I'm pretty excited about this thing.